Welcome to the Paperless Movement YouTube channel. I'm Tom Solid, and I help you to go from struggling paperless pioneer to a highly productive pro. Today, we will talk about Miro again. If you follow this channel, then you know that I talked about Miro in the past, and Miro became really my favorite and go to tool when it comes to mind mapping. Yes, Miro has a lot more to offer than only mind mapping, obviously collaboration, even task management, project management and all this. But today we will focus on mind mapping and how I do mind mapping in Miro. I will just show you the, the main features that I think Miro makes stand out in regards of being a mind mapping tool compared to other mind mapping tools like Mind Manager, MindMeister, XMind, MindNode and all the others. But if you want to dive deeper into how to use Myra as a mind mapping tool, as your go-to mind mapping tool maybe even, then I recommend check out my new online course, How to Mind Map Like a Pro Using Miro. This is available on my website, paperlessmovement.com. But now let me show you the great features Miro has to offer that makes it my go for mind mapping. The great thing about Myra is that it's really easy to add content. Let's say you are researching something and you're on paperless movement and you know, for example, reading a blog post there. Let's go quickly to a random blog post and you just want to save this for later. All you need to do is just uh, select copy with, um, I use command C, the shortcut command C and then command V to paste and that's it. It will import now this URL uh, as, a, as a bookmark. All right. So it takes the excerpt, the title, the, the URL and the featured image of the website, which is there. And that's already very nice because I can now already start building my mind map just out of this. All I have to do is go to one of these buttons, drag it out. And then it asks you what you want to add now in the end of your first arrow. So let's say we just add a shape there and we can directly write something like, I don't know, Tom Solid, for example, because it's related to this website. That's it. We built up our mind map this way already. It is as easy as, the, as this. And if, whenever you want to go into more detail, you go here, up there, click and it will open up the source. So this is already, <laughs> I mean, very powerful. It is simple, it is visually pleasing, that's for me the most important thing. I know exactly what this is now and you can go there. So let's say I want you know, to learn more about Tom Solid and I have the LinkedIn pro profile from, <laughs> from myself. Uh, so let's go just to my LinkedIn profile and I say, okay, I want to save this profile now but I don't want to add it as a LinkedIn bookmark, all right? So we copy paste again. You can also right click and copy here, go here, select this one. Then you go here to more, link, uh, click here, link to, all right? And here we add our link we just copied, confirm, and that's it. And you see already, it even shows the fav, the fav icon of this website. So I know already this is going to the LinkedIn profile from Tom Solid. So what I have now, I have the website, the source, and I have more information about Tom Solid. Click here and it will open up the LinkedIn profile. So this is going very quickly now, isn't it? So we have already, I think you can already imagine what you can do only by using these two features, right? Let's dive deeper into this. Let's make this a bit more complicated. So let's say we are on the Tom Solid YouTube channel and you watch the video. Yeah, for example, about Miro. And you want to save this to the website. Here again, go to share. It is Thailand and German. Go to share, copy the, the URL. Go here again, just either right click and paste and then it will already say you the shortcuts that you should use to do this. So we use Command V or um, Control V on, on the PC. And there we go. We have the video from YouTube directly inside Miro. It's as easy, just drag and drop here the arrow and that's it. And I can press here and I start, can start watching the video from within Miro 
just drag this out a bit more and say we want to build a mind map around this video now to, to get all the information out of this video. So what we can do now, say, let's say I talk at some point about um, Miro alternatives and I want to jump to this video to where it was, you know, mentioning this. I can go now, let's just pretend that at five minutes I'm around. This is the timestamp. We want to jump into the video, go to share again. And here you have to start at, right? As soon as you click this, it will add this code in the end, which is just the seconds of the video. The 340 is five minutes and 40 seconds. You copy this one, then here you can select this, go to the three dots again, or you can also just right click onto this and link to and add this, this timestamp here. So what this makes now, you click onto this and you will jump directly into the position of this video. So what I usually do, I have the video on one monitor, or maybe on half of the monitor, something like this, watching the video while I have Myro open. As soon as a section starts where I'm really interested in and you know, it's pointing out something, I do it this way, selecting this and copy it and paste it in here. So I have out of the overall video, the different sections, um, or chapters of this video to this different section. As soon as you want to change something like this, just simply right click again, go to edit link and here you can change this again or even delete the link, All right? So let's say, oh, I made a mistake here with the arrow. To, to navigate with the arrow thing, it is very easy. Just click on this and switch. That's it, now you have the arrow there. Maybe you want to change the style of this arrow. Just select this make it thicker, all right? So we see it's thicker already. Um, we can change the style in general about this arrow. So right now we have this curved arrow and we just select this and can make it angled, all right? And that's really powerful inside Myra because it's really flexible to do this. I know many mind mapping apps are not um, as easy to configure than in Myro. So we have a lot of opportunities to do this. So let's say we bring it up here. I changed the position of the arrow here and I want to you know, just make this a straight line again. And you can be really flexible. And if you want to get rid of these extra angles here, just double click onto this and it will get deleted and you got get back there, right? So you see now that we have a straight line again. I can just drag it out like this. But um, what I want to do now, I want this other arrow to have the same style than this one. So I will select this and go to copy style, select this one and go to paste style. All right. So you see it even turned around the arrow because we, we switched the arrow here. So what we can do either we switch back or we go just to none and select this one. So they have the really the same style now. So as soon I copy this style here, we have the same thing going on. So let's say you don't want to have, for example, we just switch these and you know the situation when two arrows come together, it doesn't look nice. So how do I make looking this nice? Just select this, make it an angled arrow. So this is already a bit better. Well, wow, that's already great if you want to have something like this. I can select this and I can drag it out. It will snap to my video. It makes it easy to really style my mind map in a very intuitive way. Okay, so as it will stick here. And those of you who are using mind mapping tools already, I know this is something we struggle with, isn't it? Because we are usually only can connect to this. So it looks like this, but here I really have the flexibility to do it in different styles as well. If you're on a desktop and you hold, press and hold the left mouse button, you can navigate around the board as you like. You can scroll on your mouse wheel and it will go like this or pinch and zoom on your touchpad. It will adapt actually the way it works depending on what device you're using for the input. So that's really another great thing. But let's say you want to select something like here. 
Okay, so what you simply need to do is just hold down shift and select. That's it. And now I press command C, command V, copy this. You could also right click here and say duplicate. All right, and that's how we easily, you know, make more of this because I want to show you something. So don't, you know, I don't mind about that the same text is all over there. Just imagine we have different things in the different boxes. I can now quickly connect these. And what you see already that the style of these arrows remain the same. So it will remember the last thing you did there. All right. So let's change one style here. Make a different color. Maybe the thickness different things like this to make it extreme. All right. So we have a different style here. So how do we apply now the style to all of these boxes? Simple. Just right click again, copy style, select those, right click, paste style. Done. Okay, that's how I copy paste style, but it becomes better. Just double click with the left button and it will create a new shape with the last selected style that you had. All right, so this is how we can easily change styles. It is the same way to do it for the arrows. So let's select all this and then let's say, oh, how do I change the style only of the arrows now? Well, it's simple. Just go to 14 objects up there and you see these are the 14 objects I selected here and it lists me what is actually selected. And then I can choose from this drop down list what shape I want to pick and simply change the style from there. And you see it switches to uh, it switches the style. The same is for the arrows. I just mentioned I want to change the arrows. I can change the, the type of the, the ending of the arrows. Can add another beginning, all this and even the color and everything. All right. That is how you change easily in a very complex mind map, several parts of your mind map. So I could also go and do like this here again, just click this uh, arrow and then I change only uh, the arrows I selected there. So it is uh, when it comes to creative research, something I really love to do is putting everything in I want, like images, research, things like this. Let's say I'm researching about a note taking app, about Node Shelf. There's an option to go here and at the, you get a search bar for images and things like this. So I can say Node Shelf logo and it comes up. You can select, if, select this, select and it's there. But there's also another way if you have a split screen or something that you don't even need split screen. I'll show you this here. No shelf logo. Just put it in here. Go to images. There we are. Here's the image. And all I need to do is just drag this out. Go here, drag and drop. And there we are. We have the logo. So this is really powerful. Again, if you're on a website and you want to get information out there or some infographics or something like this. All you need to do is just take the, the image go over here, drag and drop. That's it. It will import the image there. And even better, it imports the whole image. It's not something, um, you know, restricted. You always are able to right click here now and download the image this way. Okay, so you can download the same image that, that would you that you would have gotten here. So let's say you want to add icons. I have the icon finder here. All right. So this is how you can get this. You just go to the three dots, add more apps. And in here you have loads of different app integrations that you can use. And um, here you have the icon finder. Okay. So if you put an icon, you have the icon finder, you can say get app. And then you have something like this where you can just put in dog, for example, and we bring you up all the dogs. I can drag and drop the stock into here and there we are. However, if we zoom in, you see it is watermarked. Okay. Because it is taking the icons from different websites and um, most of them need to be paid. And that's the reason why it adds the watermarks. If you don't mind about the watermark uh, for personal use, I, I'm sure you can use it this way. However, it doesn't look nice. So what I use actually is something called flat icon. If I go here, so you see it's premium or not on the on the icon here. So let's something take something for free. Let's say 
some bacteria. Uh, all I have to do here again, just open up, take this, drag over to here, let go, and you get a non-watermarked icon for this. We could also do the same here just to, for the purpose of showing. Add a dog. And we see already what is for free. Here's something equal that we saw before. Maybe we find even exactly the same, but let's take this one. I can just take it. You can even select different styles. Okay, I can take it, go over here, drag and drop. And that's it. And the beauty about this is I can use all these icons again as um, part of the mind map. So I have always the option to connect these together and they stay connected. So if you think this was interesting and you will want to learn more, don't forget to check out my online course, Mind Mapping Like a Pro Using Miro. And as I said, if you're one of my Inner Circle members already, welcome back to the video. And this online course will be for free for you. And if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel, share it, give it a thumbs up, and I see you in the next one. Yeah, yeah, yeah.